feel like we've kind of come full circle a little bit in this uh, Unit 4, Part 1, where now we're uh, ready to talk a little bit more about the hydrological cycle. So an important part of the hydrological cycle, the water cycle, is the precipitation part. So precipitation, by definition, is something that falls from the atmosphere and successfully hits the ground. So that includes then snow, um, ice or water from the atmosphere in the form of rain or freezing rain. Now, in order to talk just a little bit more about those fluffy clouds in which we see them milky white because basically we have a liquid that is in the atmosphere going ahead and scattering light from the sun. Well, it's not always liquid. Oftentimes, actually, what you see in a cloud is um, it's not just liquid. It can also be cute little snowflakes. So I need to talk just a little bit about this idea of um, how do you get these cute little snowflakes. Okay, um, It's called uh, the crux of creating a snowflake actually is called the Bergeron process. And I guess I'm not going to go much into it, am I? But um, I want to assure you that it, it has to do with the kind of the slight difference in um, water in its solid state behaving differently at uh, relatively uh, humid, humid conditions. Um, I guess I only mention that because I wanted to introduce the term Bergeron. Bergeron process, the formation of ice crystals in your cloud. So the other reason I wanted to mention the fact that oftentimes what we that oftentimes those milky white that we see up in the sky as clouds are not because water has only condensed to form liquid but sometimes solidified to form ice crystals is this that let's just say you're experiencing rain down here walking in the rain it's quite possible that your precipitation actually started out as snow and so I want to kind of talk you through some temperature profiles that give us different precipitations here on Earth. One of the things we're going to talk about coming up is that actually if this is the Earth's surface as you go up, um, and you probably know this as you climb a mountain, it's going to be cold up here at upper elevations and it's warmer down here. Okay, that's what we call a normal, uh, normal temperature scheme. Uh, the opposite of normal then is what we call a temperature inversion. So this is normal. It gets uh, gets colder as you go up. And actually you can see it getting colder as you go up here. So we have 15 degrees Celsius, 0 degrees Celsius, and negative 10 degrees Celsius. So what starts as snow basically melts here. This is kind of in these figures where you see the, the blue and the pink. It's a solid here and it's a liquid here. Okay, so we're talking about precipitation falling from clouds. So notice that we have this temperature profile. If it stays cold okay no pink here if it basically stays cold, uh, at least zero degrees Celsius or colder then it's not gonna melt here we have all solid okay we have snow hitting the ground okay well here we actually have one of our two let me put these both up here okay these look very similar notice we have blue which means that um, it's colder than freezing we have pink, which it's warmer than freezing, and then we have blue, which it's colder than freezing. Okay, and we actually have these in both of these situations. This is what we call a temperature inversion is in place. So notice that it gets actually warmer as you go up here, and then it gets colder again as you go up here. Okay. Um, so what that allows is if, again, if we go ahead and we had the, I'll put the BP up here, Bergeron process, it gives us our snow, okay, it can melt here, which is fine, but then it refreezes here, okay. Now, depending upon the depth, what we call the depth of the temperature inversion, I'm going to clear all these slides, depending upon how much time it has here to refreeze, put refreezing over here, okay then it will either have time to go ahead and pelletalize okay in which we get sleet or it's gonna go ahead and freeze on contact and we get glaze this is glaze is otherwise known as what freezing rain oh that is so bad I hate freezing rain 
okay? But in order for that to happen, basically a temperature inversion is in place and it melts and then it refreezes. Okay, so I'm just going to tack this on. That actually, those scenarios were all starting out with a water starting as um, snow, and the Bergeron process was at the heart of that. Warm clouds actually then um, have a different sort of process. So it, I mentioned that clouds will precipitate, uh, clouds will drop their water uh, vapor if they become kind of what I said, heavy enough. And actually kind of at the crooks of that is basically we have a droplet, a liquid droplet particle that becomes massive enough to overcome kind of the updraft it's fighting against for, in order for gravity to go ahead and take hold and let that liquid water particle fall. So this isn't the Bergeron process because it's not cold enough. This is actually in what we call warm clouds. And kind of from left to right, looking, if you see what's happening from left to right, you can see that actually that little, um, little droplet that starts out here is getting bigger and bigger. And actually at this point, you can, I don't know if you can kind of see some motion, it gets to wiggling and it breaks up and actually it forms um, a set of what we call collector droplets at that point. Now, one of the things is, and in my other class I kind of emphasize this, but you see all these other kind of droplets, these are smaller. They are falling at a uh, slower rate than the larger they are, the, the faster they're falling, basically. So that's kind of how the big one kind of gobbles up the little ones.